Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a Halloween store. Please do remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Make it to the very end of the video to see where we place the Halloween store in our city. This is the amount of space required to make the Halloween store. And here are all of the materials that we will use throughout the build. However, not only will we use this double chest filled with stuff, we will also need all of these materials as well. Begin by placing two bricks in a row on the ground. One, two. Extend forwards by two. One, two. Place a brick wall in front. And then two bricks to the right. One, two. Place a brick wall extending right. And then place two bricks behind. One, two. Then extend up by three. One, two, three. Then place six brick slabs extending right. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then extend down and then join to the ground using bricks. We then want to extend forwards by one, place a brick wall in front, two bricks to the right, one, two, a brick wall to the right of that. We then want to place three bricks extending backwards, one, two, three, and then a brick extending to the right, and then ten bricks extending backwards, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then extend inwards one and then back two, one, two. Then extend across the back of the build by twelve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Then extend inwards by two, one, two. Right by one. And then extend and connect all the way back to where we very first started. Next, we want to place a row of polished blackstone inside of the archway that we have at the entrance. So, one row inwards and one row backwards, we want to create this shape. Then, place upside down polished blackstone stairs inside of the two corners. Then, place dark oak planks along the inside of the polished blackstone archway, like so. Then destroy the block in between the two rows of dark oak planks, place a smooth stone there instead with a dark oak door on top, and there we have the entrance. I think that now is a great time to remove all of the grass that we have inside of the store and replace it with smooth stone. Next, come all the way back to the entrance and place two brick slabs, one, two, extending outwards from the top of the entrance on the left and right side. Place two bricks on the ends of the slabs extending upwards, and then fill the area in between using black concrete. Then place a layer of brick slabs on top of everything that we've just made. This will form the sign. Next, 
The windows. Let's start on the left side. Place a 2x2 square of glass on top of these two bricks, with brick wall right and left of the glass. Then place two bricks extending back connecting to the entrance, and place a row of two bricks extending back and along the outline of the store. We'll extend as far back as this and no further, we won't extend across the back just yet. Then come to the opposite side and place the exact same thing, so on top of these two brick blocks, a 2x2 two two square of glass, brick wall left and right, then bricks extending back from the wall to connect to the entrance, and on the other side we will simply extend bricks along the back like this until we have the exact same thing. On the back of the build, we actually want to extend up these two brick blocks in particular, so on this side and this side, and then we want to connect them together across the back as well. So, the back of the build is ever so slightly larger than the front, but not by much. On top of the windows, we want to place polished blackstone stairs back to back like this with polished blackstone behind, and then polished blackstone stairs on top of the polished blackstone. We then want to place stairs left and right of the blackstone like this, and then simply fill in the gaps on the corners by placing blackstone slabs. We want to do this on the other side as well, so on top of the window, back to back stairs, polished blackstone behind, back to back stairs on top, place stairs extending down on top of the build, and then slabs in the corners, and we will have the exact same thing on both sides now. So the next thing that we want to do is place a row of polished blackstone slabs around the outside of the lower part of the build like this on the right side, and we will do the exact same thing on the left side. We will keep it symmetrical. Next, we want to extend the blackstone stairs back and along the top of the side of the walls, like this. You can even extend the end block inwards like this to give it a better shape. And we want to come all the way over to the opposite side and do the same thing as well. Lastly, we want to fill the remaining empty space at the top of the building in using polished blackstone slabs. And the blackstone slabs will also sit on top of the bricks that we have that run along the back of the build. So I'm just creating a shape and then I'm going to fill it in. We will be altering the inside of the store a little bit as well, so if you have any gaps or any weird shapes inside of the store, don't worry, we'll sort those out. As a matter of fact, now is a great time to prepare the inside of the store for the interior. Step one, you will notice that we have two little holes in the upper back corners of the store like this, and that has made the area significantly darker. So for now, we'll just place some torches, we can get rid of them later. Next, we want to create an alcove along the top back of the wall by placing a row of one, two, three, four bricks extending from the upper corner here and then down like this. We want to do the same thing on the opposite side. One, two, three, four, and then extend down like this. This creates two alcoves that will allow us to make displays. Next, for the entrance area, we are going to smooth off this entire wall by placing brick around the dark oak plank archway. We are also going to remove these brick slabs and once again smooth off this entire wall by placing bricks and we will do the same on the opposite side as well. And then on the sides of the build we will place a row of bricks that extends all the way from the front to the back and creates a similar alcove but on a larger scale and on this side as well. Behind the window area, we are going to place polished blackstone with polished blackstone stairs. And that will allow us to place some displays in the windows a little bit later on. 
And with all of that done, we are now perfectly prepared to make the interior a little bit later on. Next, we want to prepare the outside of the store. So first of all, dig in front of the polished black stone and extend forwards until we are one row in front of the windows. Dig all the way to the right until we are extended off of the side of the building by one. And remove all of the space in between. Dig all the way to the back until we connect to the building like this. And then we can fill all of this empty space in with pods on. We want to do the same thing on the opposite side, so dig in front of the polished black stone, underneath the walls, make sure that we are one row in front of the store, extend across, one row off of the side of the store, all the way back, connect to the bricks, and fill all of this in with pods up. Then place a row of dark oak leaves extending across the back of the store, connecting to the pods up, and we actually want to have two rows extending up like this. Whilst we're back here, we can actually remove the row of grass and grit next to the pods up, extending all the way forwards until we are two rows in front of the store, and then dig and remove all of the grass inside of the area that we have laid out, extend all the way across to the opposite side of the grid, and then all the way backwards like this. and fill all of that empty space in using smooth stone. This will create the pavement. Final bit of landscaping, remove the first three rows of the grid, aka the rest of the grass and white concrete, and replace that with grey concrete powder, or whatever it is you are using for your city streets. I should really be using grey concrete, but for some reason this feels more Halloween-y. So along the podzol and around the outside of the store, we are going to place different Halloween feely things. So soul lanterns, mushrooms, wither roses, schools, jack-o'-lanterns, all that sort of stuff just kind of dotted around the edge of the store. And you can place it in whatever density you would like. And there are a couple of other things that we can make as well. So, for instance, we can have a gravestone in the form of two back-to-back -back stone stairs like this, and I just have to move this dead bush here. And you could even have a creepy tree, so some dark oak wood with some leaves along the top like this, kind of fill them in a little bit, add an open spruce fence gate, something like this, maybe even make it a little bit taller. We can add one or two of those about as well. Maybe even some candles too. There is another cool decoration that we're going to add, but we need to make some banners. And whilst we're at it, we might as well make the actual sign for the store. So throw down a loom, open it up, and place a black banner in there with some orange dye. First, we are going to write out Halloween. So H, Pale Dexter, Pale Sinister, and then that's H. Next is A, so Pale Dexter, Pale Sinister, Chief, Fess. Next is L, so Pale Dexter, Base. Next would be another L, but we can reuse it, so instead it is O, so Pale Dexter, Pale Sinister, Chief, and then Base. Next is W, so brand new banner, apply the chevron pattern, put black dye in there indentate of orange and apply the base indented, put orange dye back in there and apply pale dexter and then pale sinister. Next is E, so fresh banner, pale dexter, chief, fess, base. We would need another E but we can reuse that one so instead our last letter is N, pale dexter, pale sinister and then bend. Perfect, we have Halloween. But Whilst we have the loom open, we are going to place a white banner in there with some black dye, 
and apply the fast pattern. Grab that, put that back in with some white dye instead and apply the pale pattern. Put black dye back in and apply the base indented pattern. That is going to be the front of our display. Then we need another white banner in there and we are just going to apply the base indented pattern. These are our banners. So first of all, the Halloween sign is simply all of our letters across the front of the black concrete that we have at the top of the entrance. And unfortunately the H and the N are cut off, but it still looks really good anyway. And for our other banners, we are going to make a spooky ghost that is kind of just floating about. So we need a white stained glass, on top of it a white carpet. Whichever direction you want the ghost to face in is where we place this banner. So this is the eyes. And then along the other sides of the glass, we want to place the alternate banner. And there we have a spooky ghost kind of just floating about the place. Next, I will show you how to make a hearse. You can place it anywhere along this road. However, I would recommend placing it opposite the jack-o'-lantern. Begin by placing a polished blackstone, blast furnace, and then a blackstone on the ground. Place glow item frames in front of the blackstone, and then place black concrete behind the blackstone, stone button in front of the concrete, Two more polished blackstone extending back with a black concrete behind and another stone button extending off of the black concrete. An upside down polished blackstone stair behind the black concrete. Extend across the back by two. And then we want to place a black concrete extending forwards. Two polished blackstone black concrete. Place stone buttons in front of each one of the black concretes. Then Place a polished blackstone connecting the front pair of wheels together with a row of glass pane extending across the top of the row. With a smooth quartz stair behind this, place a polished blackstone left and right of the quartz stair. This gives the glass something to grip onto. And then place two glass pane extending back along the blackstone and the black concrete. Place polish blackstone stairs along the back of the vehicle with spruce planks inside. On top of the spruce planks, place a flower pot with a lily of the valley inside and some candles on top of the other blank block. Light them. Lastly, place a string on top of the smooth quartz stair and black carpet on top of the bonnet on top of the glass and extend backwards on top of the blackstone block and the glass, leaving the stairs blocks alone. And then just fill the roof section in with black carpet as well. And there we go. That's the hearse complete. With the entire outside of the Halloween store made, we can now head inside and work on the interior. First of all, we are going to alter things slightly by removing this row and this row of bricks. So we will do this on both sides. Perfect, that gives us a little bit more room that we are now, starting on the left side here, able to place two rows of bookshelves extending from the front of the alcove towards the back. Then leave a gap of one, place a sideways dark oak stair, a regular one next to it, and then another sideways one. Place two rows of dark oak planks on top of this. Then leave a gap of one, place an armor stand, and then place spruce trap doors left and right of this, and one on top. Flip all of these up, and also flip a trap door in front of this as well. That's perfect. So, this center area here is simply a display where we'll have like a bunch of masks and stuff. So if you like, you can have like empty spaces in the form of empty item frames or just tripwire hooks like this, or you might want to completely fill the display. I'll leave that up to you, but we're going to come onto the opposite side now and make the exact same thing. So two rows of bookshelves extending from the front, sideways dark oak stair, regular, and then another sideways one. Place two rows on top like this. Leave a gap of one, armor stand. This time we can make a coffin using dark oak trapdoors instead, but it's the exact same method, just like this. 
And then once again, if you want to leave some of these spaces empty, you can, but I'm going to fill one of these up completely with masks. So this is a stand for masks, and I'm simply just going to place a bunch of different mob heads extending off of the top two rows like this, and you can place them in any order that you like, but I think that that one looks pretty good. Whilst we're at it, I'm also going to outfit these armor stands with schools as well. And we will also give them some appropriate armor as well. So the Wither Skull can have Neverite and the regular skeleton can have Chainmail. We are also going to have similar displays at the front of the store. It's easier to remove the window first and then add a cauldron, fill it up with water, armor stand next to it, and then we can add a skull and various armor on to the stand. And then we can just restore the window like this. Maybe even add a creepy lantern above the cauldron as well. And we can have a similar thing on the opposite side, except this time we can have a wither skeleton, same cauldron, although this time you could add like a spoon that stirs the cauldron, so an end rod or even a lightning rod works as well. And then we just have to fill the window back in with glass. So for this opposite stand, assuming that you don't just want to repeat what we have over there, we can have some different costume items and maybe we could add an additional tripwire hook as well. So for this top row, maybe some different helmets and for this middle row, we can have some different armor. And I think that that looks pretty good. It's just different costumes or different pieces of costumes. Of course, do feel free to alter these in any way that you see fit. Next, we will add the till area and counter space. Place two black concrete extending forwards from this brick and then extend left one, two, three, four, like this. Then, in front of the left and right end of the counter, we will leave a gap of two, so one, two, and then dig one, two, three, extending forwards and outwards as well. So gap of two, one, two, and then one, two, three, and then outwards. Place pods on inside of this empty space back-to-back -back stone stairs on top of this back row of pods all, and back-to-back -back polished black stone stairs on the other side. We can also place bookshelves along the top and bottom of the center alcove whilst we're at it. And then for the two grave plots, we'll place a couple of candles on one with a flower pot, with a rose, uh, an item frame, a lily of the valley, maybe even a mushroom. And on this opposite side, maybe a little bit less cluttered, a jack-o'-lantern, soul lantern, item frame, lily of the valley, and you know what, we'll actually go for another mushroom as well. Next, come back to the inside of the counter and place a brewing stand along the bookshelf here and a stone cutter to the right of it. A hay bale above this with back-to-back lightning rods connecting together to look like a witch's broom. You can even add some paintings behind this as well, maybe even one here. Then along this counter we need a till, so that's a smooth quartz stair. Soul lanterns on the two corners, then a couple of flower pots in between. Place different flowers inside of the flower pots and a skeleton skull as well, and boom, there we go, counter. In the alcove to the left, we want to place a Steve in stocks. So this is a spruce fence in the bottom left and right side. Oak planks on top, spruce fence gate in between, and we want to place an armor stand in the middle. You can then close the gate, apply a Steve head to it. Spruce signs in front of the oak planks with item frames behind the signs. White terracotta inside of the item frames. Next, some Stevie clothing. So throw down the crafting table, open it up, place a leather tunic in there with cyan dye. Grab that, put that in the inventory. Leather trousers, blue dye. Grab that, put that in the inventory. Then apply those to Steve along with some Neverite boots. And boom, there we go, Steve in stocks. Next, come over to this opposite alcove and remove the bottom row of smooth stone. Place slabs in there instead, and then drop armor stands onto the slabs. We then want to outfit the armor stands with a variety of heads. So I'm going to go with Steve, Zombie, and I want something that looks like a brain. So crafting table, throw in a leather hat with pink dye, apply that to the armor stand, and there we have a brainy looking thing. Place spruce planks above each one of the armor stands, and unfortunately we do have to remove the bricks above this. Then, 
place pistons above the spruce planks and push the spruce planks downwards. Apply another row of pistons above and push them downwards. Next, we want to place glass on top of each one of the heads. So I'm going with different colors. Lime above Steve, magenta above the brain, and red above the zombie. And then we can push these down using the pistons. And then on top of each of these iron trapdoors to look like jars that we can actually open and close. And then just restore the bricks that we had to remove in the first place. And some finishing touches include a row of orange carpet in front of the counter space and also the entrance area. We can add some soul lanterns left and right of the center displays. We can even add some soul lanterns hanging from chains just left and right of the entrance. And then wherever you may see fit, if we can just sneak some cobwebs here and about the place, just wherever you feel as though that they would fit and look good. And there we go. That is the entire interior. And there we go, ladies and gentlemen. That is the entire Halloween store complete, inside and out. However, this video is not over. We must now take our Halloween store and move it into our city. I think it's about time that we start developing the canal area of Mini City. So all the way over here, near the bridge, opposite the pet store and the post office is where the Halloween store is going to live. We even have a parking spot out front for the hearse. And that's it. I do hope that you guys have enjoyed this tutorial. Please do remember to like the video and subscribe to the channel. If you are looking for more things to build, check out the Mini City Builds playlist linked down below in the description and at the top of the comment section. Almost 70 build tutorials strong as of recording this video. It will keep you busy for a very long time. Once again, thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Good bye.